last video, which was part one of this review, I covered an overview of the class, an introduction to how the assignments work for this class, and then dove into assignment one, assignment two, and then the midterm. And at this point in time, this is where I was wondering whether I should withdraw from the class, because I think for us, it was you turn on the midterm by Monday, and then by Friday, the withdrawal deadline has passed. So I obviously ended up sticking with the class, and I would highly recommend you doing so, but I definitely want to emphasize that it is very intimidating because at this point in time, the only grade that we had in the grade book was assignment one. And, you know, I walked away from assignment two having submitted it, not feeling good about it. Um, the midterm I thought I would do pretty poorly on, and I did. But it's really important to note that the class is heavily, heavily curved at the end. And I understand why there is such a big withdrawal rate. Um, you know, it's over 30%. But if you just stick stick with it like I did, um, and I think if you just keep putting forward, you know, a decent, honest effort, then you can definitely get an A, even though it feels like you're struggling in this class. Moving on now to assignment three, which is unsupervised learning and dimensionality reduction. I would say that overall, this is one of the better assignments, maybe second to the first assignment. And I did get a 100 on this assignment, which I didn't expect, but by all means, I will take it. So let's get started um, talking about what exactly was asked for this assignment. There's certainly a pretty high or pretty large number of tasks, and this assignment did take a long time. So. I guess I did get a good grade, but I certainly spent a lot of time on this assignment. And we first started by applying two clustering algorithms, k-means clustering and expectation maximization to our data sets. I used scikit-learn and they have a Gaussian mixture model. Uh, so I used that as my specific imp implementation of expectation maximization. And you can see that it's important to choose two data sets that you really like because we've been using the two data sets for assignments one through three up until this point. After applying the clustering algorithms, the next step is to apply four different dimensionality reduction algorithms to the two data sets. Uh, and those four algorithms are PCA, ICA, randomized projections, and any other feature selection algorithm of your choice. I chose to use feature importance purely um, for convenience. I'd already been exposed to concepts like Gini importance or Gini index in previous courses, as well as when we covered decision tree classifiers. So it was easy, um, something I already was exposed to and didn't have to completely learn on my own. And I'm glad I did because as I alluded to earlier, there's a pretty large number of steps here. After applying the dimensionality reduction algorithms, then uh, we apply the clustering to those newly produced data sets. And then after that, we have to train a neural net and compare the performance for all the different combinations now. So that's a pretty high number, 16 different ones, and it is a challenge with um, a 10 page limit. Obviously you can't write about every single one, you just report the interesting results. On to like my kind of opinion on this assignment or any tips, but I would say I liked this assignment and I was excited about it overall, um, especially the, the dimensionality reduction side of things. Working on uh, classifiers with assignment one, I already saw that there was quite a lot of input variables for one of my um, data sets, especially after applying one hot encoding. So I definitely like saw the need for dimensionality reduction performance wise. And I'm glad we got to kind of learn more about the different ways to do so. However, one of the pitfalls is unsupervised learning on that same pair of data sets. Doesn't really make sense because obviously for assignment one and two, we know that this data set is already labeled. So using unsupervised learning and clustering techniques doesn't make a ton of sense. Um, and same with you know, running a neural net classifier uh, taking into consideration like the clustering as an added feature variable doesn't really make sense either just because um, we have labeled data and we know we want to make classifications with it. So 
we're not really learning any new like hidden patterns or if we are we're not really taking it into consideration since we clearly have a goal of improving our classification skills or classification metric Last but not least, we have assignment four, which covers Markov decision processes. And this is the assignment that the TAs kind of touted as the one that would be the easiest. Uh, and it is 15% of your grade. I did get a pretty good grade on this one, which is a 93. So not as good as you know assignment three, but pretty good. And I don't know if I actually agree that it was the easiest, but I will, I will kind of sympathize with the fact that what we we're actually asked to do is less than the other assignments, but there are some pretty significant challenges in doing them. Jumping into what we were actually asked to do, so first come up with two interesting MDPs and explain why they are interesting. This is like a theme in the class that we just need to be able to explain and analyze why things are interesting. So you might be sick of the word interesting by the end of the semester. Um, and for these Markov decision processes, you ideally want to be able to vary the number of states. So we were actually explicitly required to do one with a small number of states and one with a large number of states. Um, and only one of them can be a grid world problem. Uh, for Markov decision processes, grid world is by far and away the most common example. I think in undergrad and in the AI course at Georgia Tech, we covered MDPs with grid world problems, but obviously that's not always the case. Then we solve each MDP using value iteration and policy iteration, and then we basically analyze and compare them. And then the last step is to pick your favorite reinfor reinforcement learning algorithm and use it to solve the two MDPs, and again, compare, analyze, um, contrast. So I used Q-learning, which is unofficially kind of, I think, what they want you to do. The TAs definitely encourage you using Q-learning. Um, and I would say the biggest challenge for this assignment is just getting your dev environment set up. As I alluded to earlier, the actual steps that we are asked to do is not you know, a huge number of steps, but it, it is challenging just to kind of figure out how to use and set up your dev environment, meaning actually finding the library that creates the Markov decision processes. Um, you know, I ended up using AI Gym, and uh, the other one is MDP Toolbox, and there's like Hive Fork, which is um, a fork of MDP Toolbox. Just in general, there was just a lot of struggle with kind of getting off the ground because there are different forks, you know, floating around. Uh, the pip install version is different than the version that you actually may want to use. Um, people on Slack are using different versions of the different libraries. So kind of a mess in the beginning, but once you kind of get going, actually wasn't too bad. I wouldn't say that I loved this assignment just because um, I personally don't really see as much or it doesn't click for me as much um, when I would you know, be working with an MDP in the real world as opposed with like, you know, supervised learning and classification problems, um, same with regression problems. It just seems very clear to me you know, what the use case was. But I was obviously thrilled at this point to be done with my last assignment, so let's get into the final. The final exam is especially important because it can replace your midterm grade if you do better on the final exam. You have significantly more time, I think double the amount of time, uh, 180 minutes, uh, compared to the midterm, which was half that. and. You can't take any breaks though, so um, biologically like you might have to use the bathroom, so make sure you use the bathroom before. Again, the format is very, very similar, or practically the same as the midterm. Uh, the number of questions, I don't know exactly, but it felt around the same as the midterm. Uh, so whereas in the midterm, you had no way that you could feasibly address and answer each question thoroughly. With the final exam, you certainly have enough time if you, you know, have the knowledge. You don't want to just put something random down, uh, but you have time to answer each question if you want to, uh, or if you can, I should say. The content does not explicitly cover the entire course's content, it just tests you um, on the second half of the class, but it does kind of implicitly test you 
it does implicitly test you on the first half just um, because it assumes some familiarity with those concepts we covered in the midterm. Uh, I actually did, I think, comparatively a little bit better. So I got a 56 out of 110, which again does not sound great, but looking at the statistics, the mean and median were around 48 out of 110. So not bad. Um, I don't really have many comments to say since I'm not actually sure if the answers are released or explanations are released um, other than your final grade. But at this point, at least for me, I was so mentally done. As soon as I clicked submit for the final exam, I was pretty confident that I would at least pass the class and you know, I just threw my hands up and basically said I'm done. Overall, I would say that I did enjoy this class. It's certainly not a class that I enjoyed while I was taking the class, but having taken it and finished it, I do think I learned a lot of valuable stuff. And this is 100% a class that you learn by doing. Um, there's certainly no beating around the bush and they just care about you actually applying these concepts or applying these algorithms yourself and then analyzing them. It certainly is a lot of work and I definitely don't like uh, courses like this where you know you do poorly on everything and they curve your grade at the end because it implicitly does make you work harder because you're not sure exactly you know how you're gonna stack up against the curve but I assure you you're gonna be fine as long as you put forth a solid effort and I would recommend it for anyone that is truly interested in machine learning because I'm not sure you would get this kind of exposure um, elsewhere in this program Obviously, if you're a machine learning specialization, you have no choice since this is a required class. Um, but if not, you know, take a look into it if you're really interested in machine learning, but be warned that it is a lot of work. It is frustrating um, with how big the assignments are, but you do learn a lot. And I felt like I did get quite a lot out of this course.